Stephen, what is this um, innocence experience? Higher innocence. Well, um, uh, for people who are watching this, um, uh, I prepared a list of things which I thought, hmm, I think I know something about some things at this point in my life. And uh, one of the things is the way in which we uh, use our energy in a very productive way rather than just thrashing about. And um, so the, the reference to innocence and experience and then uh, reclaim higher innocence is actually an idea that uh, uh, was put forward by a uh, uh, poet, uh, an English poet called William Blake uh, several centuries ago and um, he actually was thought to be severely mentally ill by most of his uh, contemporaries and as with many things uh, he wasn't mentally ill, he was a, in a different order and what the orbit that he was in uh, involved those three concepts. So the whole idea is that you're born into the world and you um, you come with the uh, assets that any human does. Uh, you become aware of the society in which you are obliged fit, or in the case of William Blake, he chose not to, and from my point of view, good for him. Um, but anyway, you start out and you don't really know much, and you have um, experiences that you don't really understand, um, and then you enter the realm of these experiences and lots of times they're very useful but lots of times also do really hard one because you're learning things uh, that uh, actually uh, have to do with how do I value myself in this world which I have to operate in and so you get bashed about a bit. Um, you uh, give a lot of energy to uh, just trying to struggle along. And for the lucky people who get to that third stage, um, you learn to uh, sit back and observe what happened to you. And you begin to make sense of the uh, cycle that you're moving through. Uh, you get to understand things which seem difficult or probably useful for you. And so you enter that state of the, uh, a different kind of innocence where you're uh, in harmony with the world that you live in. And it doesn't mean the world is perfect. It means you understand what to do with it. So that's that's one of the things that I guess I would say I, I feel fortunate to have uh, studied literature because that I think is just a crucial idea for any of us just living daily, but it happened to be centered around that strange poet, William Blake. And there's another, again, this comes from uh, my study of literature, but um, uh, in the Victorian age there was a, a writer called Matthew Arnold, also English, and uh, he talked about the concept of trying to find your better self or your higher self. Mm -hmm. And in its own strange way, that's quite connected to William Blake's idea about the cycle that you go through. And uh, uh, Matthew Arnold talked about the idea that you're obliged as you move along to try to find the best version of yourself and go with that. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. And so those things, are, in a way, it's about how you choose to use your uh, energy. Yes. And yes. Um, mm -hmm. um, there's nothing more frustrating, from my point of view, than um, putting a lot of effort into something and uh, it not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And what both of those men are saying is, you can learn. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with intellect, it has to do with uh, actually in intelligence, which isn't the same thing as intellect. And uh, you have to learn to listen to the world around you and to listen to yourself. Mm -hmm. And you have to give time mm -hmm. to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, that part you were talking about experience, yeah. where it's trial and error, you, you're thrashing about, and sometimes that life experience can injure someone. Yeah. An individual, maybe, maybe even trauma. Yes, yeah. even traumatize. You know, exactly. yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, what about those that have uh, that have been injured and were stunned, uh, traumatized, uh, or even those um, that have given up? Yeah. I think I see some individuals that that have just given up. It's yeah. it. You know, I think their attitudes. What's the point? It's um, so. How, how how do we deal with bad experiences like that? And how how can we turn it around for ourselves uh, and and others? And you can tell right now the words aren't coming flowing out of my mouth <laughs> because that's a hard one. That's yeah. really hard. And what I would hope is that's actually the uh, obligation of those of us who have survived. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know where I'm going. Yes, yes, yes. To try to be sensitive to the person who has been actually broken. Yes, to, rec to recognize it. Yeah. Right? And mm -hmm. you know what, I mean, in perfect mm -hmm. word, because recognition of anything says I am telling you, I acknowledge where you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the, I think, most horrible experiences anyone has is being greeted with, well, actually, do you know what? Your story doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. or, or, I have one up on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I got a better. Let's do this contest. Or yeah, yeah, you know, like a spitting contest. Yeah. You know, uh, of, you know, I I can talk that one. And the, it's the, belittling. It's belittling it is. to the other person. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that's what the. Uh, uh, if you recall what I said about my concerns about labeling students a few minutes ago, that's that same thing. It's devaluing instead of encouraging which is I wonder how far you can go it's already been decided by a system do you know what you actually can't achieve more than that so get used to it and, and it's uh, yeah it's demeaning it's almost like a, a, a a means of control, yes, manipulation. Yeah. And I had a few colleagues, and I'm going to sound really anti-teacher here, but that's okay. Um, I work with a number of really fine people, but I also worked with people who, in their classrooms, used their more advanced knowledge, which they had been lucky enough to achieve by in, some, in most cases, going to university, and they use that as a club to demean the students. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know this, I'm superior. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what a um, shame 
I guess that, I mean that's a kind of an old-fashioned word, but I would say about those colleagues, shame on you that you did that because and you did it because you could. Mm -hmm. At least in those days. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I don't think people. I know you. You feel you feel comfortable. Uh, scrutinizing teachers, I don't <laughs> because I, you know, uh, they're not my peers. But um, you know, I do have respect for them because they have been—they've uh, gone through the educational level, the education, and, and the different levels. They've been filtered out and filtered out, and people aren't perfect. But um, you know, when I see the role models, the wonderful teachers that I had, um, I just—I remember the wonderful ones that yeah. were. They were just so ahead of their time, broad-minded, and um, and so forth, and yeah. So I have a I have a great respect for them. So. Yep.